Hello everyone. Sorry if this video is a little different, I am having a lot of technical difficulties. My video pad program has decided to crash constantly. Power Director 11 is a horrible program for trimming video because you can't press pause then drag the out marker to the time arrow, because the moment you grab the out marker the arrow jumps and repositions where in the video you are. And typing in the time by hand means you have to remember precisely numbers like 134.19.33 and the very moment you type in a number on the marker it automatically jumps to that time, so you better have a knack for remembering numbers. For everyone that has video pad, look in the description for some advice on what this nasty program may be doing to your computer. This text to speech voice, Brian, by Ivona, has expired, I did a hack. And while I got it to continue the trial, the periods and commas are too long, and I can't change that setting. I'll get it all straightened out eventually. Until then, I gotta work with what I got. Oh, and I met the Emperor of the Black People. I just wanted to let you know that everything is cool now. My dad apologized to Jesse Jackson. Oh, I see. So I'm supposed to feel all better now. Well, yeah. You just don't get it, Stan. Dude, Jesse Jackson said it's okay. Jesse Jackson is not the emperor of black people. But this guy is. Hello, this is, uh... Shakama. Shakama Live. Shakama.wordpress.com uh, your host Kevin Cardinale. Uh, this is, uh, continuing in my series of Leave Black People Alone. Yes, I've noticed you have a lot of videos on the topic of asking political movements to keep black people out of it. Funny thing is though, I never knew that the black race got together and elected you as their spokesperson. Or maybe it was the whites that elected you to speak on behalf of your people. Maybe whitey seen the strange hats you wear in your videos and just assumed you wore them because you were their chief or something. At any rate, glad to know that you speak on behalf of all black people. Um, a, a lot of people want to include black people in their little list of supporters in their various movements. Those fucking bastards. How dare those racist crackers want to give a voice to black people and include them in the decision making process. ...are the uh, feminist movement, the men's right uh, movement, uh, the gay movement, uh, a lot of the uh, whatever Christian movement happens to be of the day, uh, or the anti-war movement, a lot, a lot of the movements. But most, at the base of these movements, there is started, promoted, and preached to middle class white people. They are not movements started by black people. And the only time that these movements even care to even talk to black people, and I'm including even talking about their input of what we think about those particular movements, is when they want to go to Congress, is when they want to take action, is when they need numbers. That's the only time that any of these movements ask black people anything. Other than that, they don't want to hear from black people, and they definitely don't want them at the meetings. Well middle class white people do make up the majority of America. So what you're saying is, political movements that affect the average American demographic, are started by the average American demographic. In a democracy of all things. And the nerve of these white people wanting to include other races in the decision making process. How dare they, why don't they just leave blacks alone to suffer the consequences without a voice? So when a political movement requires numbers, it reaches out to everyone. Wow that's a brilliant strategy. Who would have thought? But what is all this nonsense about the only time black people are included? What was excluding them before the petition to congress? Most movements that aren't generated out of rich corporate interest, are grassroots movements. Aside from racial separatist movements and racial liberation movements, when have grassroots movements ever had a policy of, for us by us? That's the only time that any of these movements ask black people anything. Other than that, they don't want to hear from black people, and they definitely don't want them at the meetings. Those are facts, those aren't just a conjecture. I've shown up to meetings, and they've been like... So the proof behind your facts is that you personally feel that people are surprised to see you, and look at you strange. Maybe they're not looking at you all strange because you're black, 
Maybe they are looking at you all strange because of the weird fucking hats you wear. You don't really have any black friends do you? I imagine you being the only black guy in a white area of Colorado or something. And so all of your white friends look to you to fill them in on black culture and the black perspective. That's why you wear those retarded hats. You walk around wearing those ridiculous things like, oh yeah man all the black people be doing it. It's my culture, it's my thing. All the while having no clue to what the average black person says or thinks. One of your commenters wrote that you sound like a black guy who is imitating the way white people talk, like when Dave Chappelle imitates a white guy and says something like, Hi, I'm Rick, I'll take a lot A. Eh? My, what lovely weather we're having today. Today I'm talking about a men's rights. Leave black people men, uh, leave black men alone in the men's rights movement. You've never come to us and asked us what we felt about men's rights. You don't want to hear from us unless you want to go to have some sort of legislation against the feminist movement. Which what the fuck? The men's rights movement has never had anything to do with race. There has never been an effort that I'm aware of to target black people for recruitment, or to discourage them from coming to meetings and being a part of the process. As for waiting until the movement plateaus to ask blacks for their signature, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. This movement has barely gotten off the ground, there are internal battles over what we should or shouldn't do. And black people are a part of that decision making process. One of the most influential voices the MRM slash MGTOW has on YouTube is a black man called Barber Rose spelled with lots of S's and A's. He has a lot of followers, he gets serious respect from Emirates and is a voice of reason and inspiration. And he is very instrumental in guiding the attitudes, philosophies, and direction of the movement. Sparky Fister, is a new YouTube broadcaster in the MRM, and he has a strong following. And was probably half the inspiration for me to start making videos about the movement. The back and forth edits of him replying to feminists in a comical fashion led to me making a video in that theme to Christine Rad, as my first video. Without his contribution to the movement, I'm not sure I'd be making MRM videos. And his voice carries as much weight in the movement as anyone else's with his fan base, which for an MRA, is a healthy sized fan base. And there are more black people in the men's rights movement, and no one is looking down on them or excluding them. I don't know how many more blacks there are. I never went around doing a head count. There are no racial quotas to be filled. None of my subscribers know what race I am, and no one has asked, because no one cares about race. Not even my closest friends in the movement know what race I am, because they don't care, thus never asked. This movement isn't a racial themed movement. It's about men having equal child custody under the law, equal protection under domestic violence laws, fair and equal treatment in all facets of society. It's about demanding that men and women both be expected to take responsibility for their actions and privileges. The men's right movement, I understand it. It just doesn't apply to black, black men. I understand that you're saying that the feminist movement has gone well beyond what the, uh, the, uh, uh, the soundbite or the slogan says that it's for the equality of women. No, it was started by middle class and upper class white women to gain control of and gain power from middle class and upper class white men. At no point were there black men telling their black wives to not work. I don't think you've ever heard that in I've never heard a white man telling his white wife not to work. I mean, I've seen it in sitcoms, but only an idiot gauges reality by what he sees on TV. ...in history, to not vote, to not have an opinion. Have you ever heard a black man tell a black woman not to have an opinion? Never happened. And if it did, all you have to do is turn on the TV to, to, to see that black women have an opinion, and about everything. What did I just tell you about gauging reality based on TV? And when did white men tell women to not have an opinion? And are you sure you really want to convey to white people that they should get to understand black people by watching how they act on TV? We now return to... Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> I 
told you. What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Cause I told you. Mm-hmm. And when did I tell you? A long time ago. And what did I say will happen when I told you? Exactly what just happened. And black men have never said, shut up, uh, you can't have an opinion or get in the kitchen. Mainly because black men are in the kitchen along with the women, doing the dishes, raising the kids, what have you. And have done so for thousands and for a millennium. So no black man has ever told a black woman to shut up. And black men have shared responsibility in traditional women's work more than white men. Give me a break. A plague in the country. I understand the movement. Just leave black people out of it. Don't call us for a list. Don't call us to go march on Washington. You never came when we asked you to come. And in fact, as far as the anti-racist stuff, we don't need you either. We're, we're grown people. We can take care of our own anti-racist movement. No one is accusing black people of not being grown up. But the reality is that white people make up the majority of America and all English-speaking nations. And therefore if you want to get something done on a government level, you are going to have to make an appeal to white people. Oh and whites never involved themselves in the African-American civil rights struggle in the past. No white people were instrumental in ending slavery. No white people were instrumental in ending segregation. No white people were instrumental in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I hate to break it to you, but white people were the majority in each one of those movements. And to this very day, if blacks want something done, they have to get the support of the white majority. That's just the reality of numbers in a democracy. Yeah, like the atheist, the atheist movement. You never call black people to ask us about that, so leave us out of that. What do you mean they never call you? You mean to tell me every time a group of white people get together with an idea for change, they have to look up black people in the phone book and make an appeal to them before calling their movement a movement? Hello? Good evening Mr. Brownman, this is Whitney Whiteman, and we just came up with a simply marvelous idea for a political movement, and we are giving you the obligatory, ask a minority before making a movement, phone call. Yes, well what is the idea for your movement? It's brilliant really. First, I'm sure you've heard of this notion that God doesn't exist. Yes, I am familiar with this notion. Well us white people got together at one of our extravagant charity balls, and while dining on cheese and port wine, we decided that we should spread the idea that there is no God. We call it atheism. It's called atheism because it's not theism. And what exactly is to be accomplished by the spreading of such a radical belief, or rather disbelief? Well, we hope to end religious dogmatic thinking in the political process and inspire politicians and the voting public to use facts, evidence, and critical thinking. That sounds fine and dandy, but you need to leave us black people out of it. Oh, well, I suppose if one black person voices his opinion, he must speak for the entire race. I guess that's how you people work, like the Borg or something, you all think the same thoughts and stuff. No lady. You need to leave us out of it because you didn't contact us until now. But we only came up with the idea two hours ago. Yeah, and why wasn't my phone ringing an hour and a half ago? By the way, has anyone ever told you that you sound like Dave Chappelle imitating a white person? Damn it, why do people keep saying that? I am black. I represent all black people. I am the king of the blacks. I got a gangsta hat to prove my street grid. You need to quit pretending that political movements started by the white majority have no effect on blacks. Every law and everything that affects white people affects black people too. You insist that blacks be kept out of the political process. You say movements need to leave blacks out of it, as if you were being drafted against your will. You don't speak for anyone but yourself. You are not the king of blacks. You are fired.